All right, so we are recording, and I would say we're live, but we're not live because we're actually recording. <laughs> and I, I'm going to edit this because uh, my life is complicated and things interrupt me, and Sniper's life is complicated, and he's got kids, and sometimes things happen. So we uh, we might have to pause and come back more than once. So um, there's this current sort of dust up about the Britisher, where this. There's these constant charges of people saying that he wants to have this immoral society that's sort of like what Bill Murray described in Ghostbusters with the dogs and the cats and living together in the streets and the, you know, all this nonsense, right? And it's kind of got me annoyed. I, I, I sort of feel like he's being heavily straw Um, To my mind, this is not necessarily the world that he wants. He doesn't want a world full of twerking and ass beer and all this other sort of stuff. I think he just wants a tolerant world where people don't have the power to prevent that sort of stuff because of the whole Mary Whitehouse episode and so many other things that he's seen over his millennia of existence. He knows from history that these repressive things that try to force things to be uniform are bad, or at least they almost always work out to be bad. And he's, I just think he's being misrepresented. And I think Sniper feels pretty much the same way. So I wanted to talk to him about that. I mean, what are your feelings on it? Well, yes, it's, I guess the best way to put it would be a push by certain people in the YouTube sphere to present him as the great big scarecrow to bang on right now. Um, there's certain There's certain shows that I don't even understand why he still goes on. And it it began to frustrate me as well. A couple of the you know a couple of these things I, I I could look at it and I could tell you what his position really is, but that's not what you're going to hear on these streams, right? And I I may be projecting my own particular morality on top of what he's saying and giving him by far the most. Um, when I say charitable interpretation of what's going on. So it may be the case that I'm just completely wrong about this because when I was growing up, there was an author that I used to read and he wrote a lot of stuff sort of in the time period between World War I and World War II. And uh, he wrote a book called Tolerance. I think it's called Tolerance, the Hope of uh, Mankind. And it was largely written in the, hey, that first world war was really awful. Maybe we shouldn't all kill each other perspective. But in general, it seems to me that tolerant societies seem to do better than intolerant ones. Um, I've long thought that in terms of uh, a lot of the success of the United States, particularly, has been because we've been brain draining the rest of the world quite effectively. And part of why we're able to do that isn't just because we're this economic juggernaut. And we've had all this growth. It's because people came here and they were a lot freer than the place that they came from. So Singapore may be a really clean, decent place where there's not going to be any gum on your seat on the subway, but I personally would choose not to live in Singapore because, you know, the obvious reasons, because I'm a, you know, I actually believe all this propaganda about America. And I think you saw lots of people go see uh, Carry On Nurse and Carry On Doctor and <laughs> you know, Carry On <laughs> Up the Mississippi or whatever all those, those movies were and the Immoral Mr. T's and he saw all this kind of stuff and it didn't ruin anybody. It didn't cause massive degeneracy in society. I mean, I, I'm just not buying it. I, I think I kind of agree with Britisher. I understand why he's uh, uh, why he's so unwilling to to you know as much as he will openly say yes the you know the current left is cancer. Um, he is unwilling to sign up to be a part of the right because I'm right there with him. They're both crazy in their own way. Let, let's, uh, uh, well, uh, okay, you're American, so you remember Jim Baker. Oh, yeah. And all the hookers. I actually did some research and found a whole list of uh, preachers uh, who did pretty much the same sort of thing, you know, this, I mean, and, and worse than Jim Baker. Yeah. And, and, you know, what on the right we grew up watching happen. And that's not the that's not to say that right leaning uh, economics are not uh, are not wonderfully you know improving this planet on any given moment economically they've got good points but when it gets into the social sphere 
there is a phenomenon where the louder they scream about something, as much as people accuse the left of projecting, the right will be projecting too. Jim Baker screamed and hollered about, uh, you know, uh, screamed and hollered about, uh, as a Baptist preacher would, uh, about, you know, affairs and, and all this sex stuff, what have you. And, and it was, uh, you know, he was wrapped up in so many hookers, it wasn't even funny. There's right before the right before all the stuff about about gay rights really kicked off there were tons of preachers who were raising hell and the ones who were raising the most hell whether they were big public names or not almost every single one of them wound up hooking up with a guy there were a lot of rent boys and a lot of illegal drugs in those stories but Hypocrisy is possibly another topic for another time because I've actually been thinking about the topic of hypocrisy. Yeah. Hypocrisy yeah. is its own special thing we should probably come back and talk about later. But yeah, um, I take your point, but more, you know, my, more my point is why would you trust, you know, why would you trust these people? Basically, the, the fundamental place that m most honest God centrists come to is that people are messy. People don't often make a lot of sense, and the vast majority of us, not all of us, there are bad actors, but the vast majority of us are just trying to figure out how to make it from day to day without causing any more havoc than they have to. And so we tend to look at the bad actors on the left and the fundies on the right, and and whether they be uh, whether they be Jewish fundamentalists, whether they be Christian fundamentalists, or to be honest, we even Islamic fundamentalists are really, when they get down to it, they're on the right, even if the left thinks they're buddies with them right now. Uh, they, these are people who will cause more havoc than good in the end. Maybe a, a little bit of them is okay, but too much becomes a problem. And that's largely where Britisher lives and where I live and why I get accused of being a fence post. I'm socially liberal, fiscally conservative. I call myself a Goldwater Republican because that was sort of, I mean, it's kind of an outdated reference. Most people don't even know what that is anymore. But, you know, that's essentially where I'm coming from. I'm kind of a small L libertarian. Voted for Johnson in the last election because I thought he was the most honest person running. And, you know, it, uh, amongst the contenders that were, were out there, that just made sense for me. So um, let, let me go back a little bit. In the late 80s, early 90s, if you watched a lot of public television in the U.S., where all the, you know, big brain shows were, you had people like uh, Milton Friedman uh, talking about his series Free to Choose. And I know that, you know, you're a libertarian, so you probably have run across his stuff more than a few times. and Economics aside, whether it's about monetary policy or the Austrian school and all that sort of stuff, the message was a strongly libertarian one, meaning that everybody, you know, that we should have a tolerant society and that people should be able to live their lives the way that they want with minimal government interference. But then you get these moralists on the left, the people that are in the progressive moral panic, and you get these moralists on the right, like we used to have in the moral majority. I did sign Friedrich Nietzsche up for a moral majority card. I still have that somewhere. I need to dig it up. Um, and these people seem to want to use not just non-governmental uh, power, but governmental power to enforce their view of morality on the rest of us. Um, I have no issue with people saying, hey, maybe you should think twice about representation, or maybe you, you know, maybe, maybe uh, all of this... Uh, immorality that people are exhibiting isn't really the best way. And they can prove by example that their more conservative traditional life works, right? You can show by example that what they're doing works. And then people are fallible and they make their mistakes and they eventually find their way. Maybe not all. You know, there's some people who go to the casino and they they don't leave until they've lost everything they own. But, you know, most people are okay. We don't have to outlaw gambling. Um, I guess I'm just sitting there on the third fence post at this point, uh, and I'm rambling a bit, so I'm going to kick it back to you. Well, <clears throat> um, 
academic Asian attempted to uh, attempted to to at one point push the Britisher on this subject because largely the, largely the viewpoint I have and and the viewpoint that Britisher and several others probably have I, I think you're here as well is I don't have to agree with what you're doing in your house as long as you're doing it consensually and you're not screwing with kids who gives a damn um, and a, a you know an AA tried to say well we're not talking about government action we're not talking about you know writing laws and and the Britishers viewpoint on this I believe because I share this viewpoint if I'm correct is largely you're not talking about laws right now wait until you've been in power for five minutes well the left is talking about laws they're talking about right. literally making certain types of speech that's, illegal that's very true but it, 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 it my, my point is this they it, the you know the 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 Christian, you know, going after the going after the games and going after the movies and going after the music and what have you that went in went on in the nineties happened, you know, they they did try they did go on to try and push laws unsuccessfully, but they tried to push laws the second they had um the ability to go that way. And and, and in fact the ESRB came into existence. We'll use the video game example. The ESRB thing came into existence and all those game ratings came into existence to literally head off the Christians at the pass and create a system you know that was similar to the similar to the movie rating system in order to take the bite out of the argument and they succeeded in doing so and my my point with this is you've got the left trying to push all this stuff right now okay because mm -hmm. culturally they're in uh, well okay you can argue whether they're still in ascendancy. I kind of feel like they may have peaked, but culturally they feel strong. So now they're trying to push and the people on the right are going, Oh, this is immoral. All of this is degenerate. All of this is bad. Choose you. You know, we, we should have some standards for ourselves, but we're not talking about laws. Well, you're not in ascendancy. The last time you were in ascendancy, you went after video games, Jack Thompson. Yeah, and actually, I, I would, I mean, in a sense, I wish Britisher was here. I wish we could drag him into this conversation because that would be a lot of fun, I think, for everybody. But I would not be at all surprised if the Britisher isn't aware of what motion pictures were like before the MPAA came along. If you look at pre-code well, movies, he said a it's... Lot of it. He said a lot of stuff about this in regards to, because, of course, the UK has their own standards of course. he said a lot of on this subject I, I think i know where you're getting ready to go let's see if i'm right well i mean a lot of what they were doing before the code was enforced in the united states was pretty amazing i mean in a sense the code the mpa codes probably pushed uh filmmaking as an art back a couple decades and it's taken quite a while to sort of catch up um i'm not a film expert but just looking at a few samples of this, that's the way it appears to me. That is my opinion. Um, and you have these kinds of opinions, you know, in lots of different places. Um, also, I was talking about the 1990s and uh, this sort of libertarian thing that was going on in intellectual circles, right? You also had historians doing it, like uh, Eugen Weber, who's a historian of uh, UCLA. I think he's out of the Annenberg Center. If, you know, he would talk about history and then he would talk about it from a libertarian perspective, you know, much like uh, Milton Friedman would talk about libertarianism from an economic perspective. But there was this, you were kind of awash in this kind of thing. And I think Britisher, much like I did, you know, waded deeply in that pool of libertarianism and and kind of soaked it up like a sponge. I think that for him, kind of like me, uh, it's a foundational sort of thing. The ideas of tolerance and that people, you know, are fallible. Yes, they will make mistakes. You know, they will find their own way eventually. Um, you know, I, 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 I kind of feel like I understand where he's coming from, or at least I think I know where he's coming from. 
Yeah, well, I, I come to it. Uh, I came to where I am differently. I um, I was at one point. I was a Republican. Um, I uh, uh, at the time I had the uh, fortune of being able to actually live in Newt Gingrich's district and vote for the man, um, and uh, and of course knew the man, but. I then, you know, I then watched as time went on a lot of uh, a lot more of moral moralizing seep into it and what have you. Um, and uh, and then, of course, you know, uh, W comes in and, and really leans on the religious right people to, to, to you know, because it basically, OK, go back in time. You got Clinton getting uh, getting funny in the oval office and w effectively runs a a all right let's get back to being you know serious and 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 a little more moral uh campaign a return a return to normalcy is i think the term for it and and you know leans on the religious people to do it and what have you and more moralizing comes in and eventually i walk away from that and I, I then look at the left, and they want to call and have continued to call everybody on the right racists for a very, very long time. So I'm not going there, and eventually I wound up settling down into being pretty much dead center and libertarian. So I had a different journey than you on that. Yeah, well, I mean... I think you well if you look at uh, Ronald Reagan for instance he was a democrat originally and uh eventually found his way to become probably one of the more famous republican presidents of the 20th century you know there's a lot of pictures of him reading copies of national review it wasn't that he the guy didn't ha have ideas and it wasn't that he wasn't well read um he I, yeah it's a whole different topic for another conversation but yeah um a lot of people, I think, find their path similarly to the way that you do. You know, you have to sort of try a bunch of ideas. I, I think when you're when you're younger, when you're in your early 20s, it's pretty easy to just go, I've just learned about this thing. And if everybody just did what I think they should do, the world would be a fantastic place. And then it takes a while to realize that the world is messy and that people are fallible and that redemption is important. And you eventually come around to understand that, you know, it's actually amazing that the world works as well as it does, given the state that it's in right now. And you get a more nuanced view of things. So these 20 something cigar stream uh, people talking about a lot of their theories about morality and society. I mean, it's it's interesting and I'm happy to have that conversation occasionally with people. But at the same time, I also know that until you've actually tested your ideals in real life and had a little more experience, you know, they're just ideas. They might even be good ideas, but they're still ideas and they haven't been tested. And so I, I try not to be dismissive, but it's easy to be dismissive of people that haven't really tested, haven't really been tested by life, I guess is a better way to phrase it. That's a fair point. Yeah, you, you gotta get beat up a little bit before you really know what you think. Um, but um, I, I I look at, I look at what's going on, and you know the Britisher is very obviously not of the left. I am not of the left. You're not of the left. No, no. Um, but yet, you know, I, I go on fake accents, and I, you know, I get called out for not being harder on certain subjects, what have you. Britisher is getting straw man left right and center um and, and it's and it's by these people on the right and it's like okay you all are talking about a return to christianity when 10 years ago atheism was all anybody wanted to talk about now you guys are wanting to 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 talk about a return to christianity and yet from my point of view you guys have no idea what Christianity is about. The, the, the biggest problem with the left currently 
is the fact that they're a religion without a redemption narrative. You, you need to remember that your religion is supposed to have a redemption narrative. And right now, you don't. And you, you ha without a redemption narrative, you have no ability for nuance. Because you have to allow for the fact. People are messy. People are screwed up. We're all just fallible creatures. We're all just a mess. And, and you know, with we all have our demons, for lack of a better way of putting it, that, that we sort through. And we all have our, you know, we all do the best we can with what we have to work with at any given time. And I am literally watching the right, which right now we could use a little bit more of the right culturally. And even I will say this, I, I'm watching them make the same mistake the left is. And it kind of scares me. It seems cyclical. It seems like they're just taking turns being stupid. Well, even as, even, okay. Even when I was a kid and coming out of high school, what have you, even the 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 Christian, the more hard uh, hard in Christian types, would at least acknowledge the fallibility of a human being if you pin if you pinned them down, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not seeing that right now. I, I'm just seeing othering, um, and and and. and you know uh, that that George W. Bush, if you're not with us, you're against us thing, um, and and he's not the only one that said it, but he's the one that kind of kicked it off in our lifetime. Literally, I was in church because I do go to church, even uh, even though I have issues with faith, I do go to church because I still wrestle with these kind of topics, and the the sermon this week was about. Uh, the parable of the lost sheep and about how, you know, the, the, the uh, scribes and what have you were, were turning their nose up at Jesus because he, uh, he would sit down and, and, and spend time with, uh, with lepers and with, you know, open sinners, you know, people that uh, people that AA would love to call degenerate in any number of ways. And the whole point of it is you don't turn a human away because they're a human, right? It, you know, and in the religious context, it's that you keep the lines open because you want to give them the chance to to come to come back to the fold, right? But just in general, from a secular point of view, that story still has a good point in that you don't – othering people is how you wind up with concentration camps and how you wind up with Auschwitz, okay? Othering people is how you wind up with you know, Twitter mobs literally driving people to suicide. It, it needs to stop, and, and it needs to stop no matter where it is. Nuance is a thing. Humanity is never going to be perfect. And I feel like I'm one of the last people on the planet that's willing to admit that. Well, I think okay, I'll just um, – there's, there's a lot to digest there. Um, Sorry, I know I went off for a no, bit. No, 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 it's fine. It's fine, and uh, – I mean, I actually prefer this where we're, you know, to having seven people interrupting each other all the time. So I want us both to finish our thoughts. If I say anything too stupid, that said, just just jump in. Um, I, I I had that same kind of thought. I've been thinking about the whole Zoomers, Millennials, Boomers thing that's been going on. And at a certain level, it's useful because you can say, uh, you know, I'm not an intersectional person and i don't look at the world in terms of you know which intersections you have to make your little individual venn diagram and that supposedly defines what you are but at the same time obviously um i've lived through things if you look at it as a generational thing like you're looking at you know are boomers really that different from zoomers well i mean yes and no i mean i think it's a useful tool but i almost feel like it's it's gotten a bit much recently 
that we're almost starting to just other people based on age in much the same way as people are doing it based on other criteria. But yes, the redemption narrative is important. Um, a lot of the, back in the Four Horsemen days when it was uh, Dennett, Dawkins, Hitchens, and uh, Harris, right? There was a lot of talk about how if we were going to replace Christianity and traditional religion, what were you going to replace it with? Um, what would that sort of thing be? And I don't think that the Church of Social Justice is the is really what people need, um, because it's it, it is kind of toxic. The lack of a redemption narrative is is horrible. Um, it 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 seems more like the Salem witch trials or that type of thing than it well, does. Well, Twitter mobs. That that would yeah, definitely well, be the Twitter mobbing. Yeah, and and I don't want to I don't want to come off as being necessarily far right because I do listen to Aiden Paladin's stuff because she's a, a communication psychology person and she talks about these things about uh, deindividuation, you know, as a necessary component, you know, for being able to view somebody as less than human. And there's all sorts of research about this. I mean, you can get into the numbers and start talking about why people do that. Um, and and they're in, you know, the ultimate expression of that can be something like Auschwitz or a concentration camp. So I certainly don't want to want to do that. And when I talk about tolerance, I do not mean to say that you have to be tolerant of people that aren't acting in good faith. Right. That, tolerance. This is true. Yeah. Tolerance is is a value in itself. People say you don't stand for anything. No, actually, tolerance is a value. It's a positive value. And originally, when human beings stopped existing in tiny little hunter gatherer groups, and we had agriculture and cities developed. There were certain things that had to happen for that to work, for that transition to happen. One of which was, you know, we developed these immune systems that uh, are now caught, you know, now in these clean environments we live in, we have Crohn's disease and all this other stuff, arthritis, all these autoimmune diseases, because our immune systems had to handle the relative just sort of filth and disease in close quarters of these early cities. But more importantly, we had to learn that, like, okay, once we accept that we're all living in the city, maybe we shouldn't kill each other. Maybe we have to actually put up with the fact that, you know, somebody does something that I don't want them to do. And that kind of working out of those differences and where the lines are drawn, like, you know, I don't want my neighbors moving from some part of the world and then keeping puppies in their backyard that they're going to kill and eat. I mean, that personally would offend me and probably make me lose a lot of sleep. Um, we all do have limits, but tolerance does broadly speaking mean that we should tolerate the differences in others, if especially if they don't affect us in any material way. If nobody, if no third party is being hurt by them. Anyway, well, that's just my thinking. Is, I, I will say this, this is a place where you and I are going to disagree to a point because as much as I don't like the idea of eating dog um i grew up you know handling livestock and i've raised things that i've then eaten i've also hunted my whole life um if they're raising dogs because they're i don't know i i, I but i was just trying to think of something that would offend that something that while not violating the non-aggression principle offends me on a level where I would be genuinely upset. And this well, is my personal line. And I'm just throwing it out there because I admit that I'm being kind of a hypocrite about this, but this is a line for me where I might have to put up with it, right. To live in the society I'll, that I want to live in, but I don't like it. Well, okay. Well, I'm not going to say that it would be the funnest thing to, to contemplate, but at the same time, if I understand that their livestock if I don't want to see it, then I can put up a privacy fence, and and as long as they are not abusing them before it's harvest time, that's just something you got to learn how to live with because I, it's I'm livestock. Aware. No, I, I'm aware one man's pet is another person's livestock. It yeah. it would encourage you to keep the gate closed, though. <laughs> it, it, so, yeah, no. that, I, get that's gonna, I get you there. Um, that's gonna make for that's gonna make for for good neighbors. But, and by uh, the way, in California, there are rules about privacy fences. They're not allowed to be too high. 
just keep going. Don't think about it too much. <laughs> California is, hashtag California is a third world country. Um, man, you just destroyed where I was going to go with that. Damn I'm it. sorry. It felt like we were getting too serious and I needed to make a joke. All right. Well, then. All right. Well, then let's do this then. Okay. Yeah, you, you know, obviously the, the thing that frustrated me the other day was the way they roasted him on unpopular opinions. Now, I can't remember whether it was unpopular opinions or one of the cigar streams where the twerking thing came up mm -hmm. that, that uh, um, prison planet friggin Oh, uh, Paul Joseph uh, Paul Joseph oh my God. Yeah. I could not remember the name. Um, but anyway, he was the one that started all that. Um, and so, and then, of course, everybody, you know, everybody straw man the hell out of British and didn't even really allow for an honest discussion of of that. So I'm going to talk about the twerking incident for a minute, okay? And just bear with me. So, Go ahead. So this thing got posted. I am going to op I am going to open another drink. Um, this is not a drunk stream, it, but it is a drink stream. At least for me, no. it is. So just do that. Well, you, you have fun with that. I'm, I'm trying. You, you, you to carry on. Right now. Um, but, uh, but so this started with a Twitter video, as far as I know. Now, in this Twitter video, there is a class where they are. It, it looks like it's in a gym. And honestly, I looked at it and I went, okay, that's an aerobics class that mm -hmm. the instructor has then decided to add in a, hey, if you'll sign up for my aerobics class, I'll also teach you how to twerk. Okay. Actually, that's a, that's a neat, you know, a neat gig. And so I looked at the whole of this situation and I went, okay, why is it degeneracy for them to be twerking in a private aerobics class? So, so, so follow me on this. It's an aerobics class, which means you have to have signed up for the class. And an aerobics class is 99% of the time going to be held in a gym that's going to be a membership gym, which means you had to sign up for the gym. So you have had two opportunities to opt out and not see this shit. Okay. And you're now in that room seeing this. And that's your problem because you didn't have to sign up for it. Now, it then becomes – so I see nothing wrong with these women learning how to twerk in a private class, in a private setting. And I'll say this. If they went out in the middle of – I think it's Hyde Park in London or Central Park in New York or, or you know – out on the college, the middle of the college commons somewhere, whatever, and they wanted to hold this class, that that might be a little bit of a different story because then you're not actually signing up to see this. You are having it thrown in your face, and that's a little different. What I looked at that video and the problem I saw with that video when I saw it is whoever recorded this, whether it was one of the class members or one of the members of staff of the gym, violated the privacy of every one of those women by posting this video. And here's my and here's why I feel this way. I, I'm I'm married. I know what it's like when a woman's working out. She doesn't. And most of the reason that these aerobics class are private is because they don't want to be sweaty around a bunch of guys. They want to be sweaty and and do the things they have to do for their health or for their man or for their whoever the real whoever or whatever their reason is. They want to do this privately or in a setting with other women. Where they can feel, you know, feel some uh, um, um, comradeship, not in, in not in front of a bunch of guys. You know, they gender segregate these classes, and then this idiot puts this damn video on Twitter. And if it was an employee of the damn gym, they should have been fired because that's violating these women's privacy. They didn't ask to have that put on on Twitter. If it was a member of the class, I hope they were booted from the damn class. 
as far as the content of the video itself being is it degenerate honestly you're supposed to be a certain age to sign up to twitter anyway so if you can prove to me that every one of the women in that class signed a form saying yes you can post this video on twitter then there then there's no problem whatsoever because you know it's if your seven year old is signing up to Twitter, that's a parenting problem and that's a you problem. That's not my problem. Well, okay. Other than causing a little bit of seasickness, I'm not actually sure why twerking would be immoral in general, unless just women wearing leggings and tight exercise clothes is offensive. I mean, I really can't be bothered. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm having trouble even I'm having trouble even putting my mind into the place where I think that such a thing is a there problem. Are, I mean, or or if it is a problem, it's 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 so far down the list compared to am I getting enough fiber or um, you know should I make sure I eat more garlic or whatever. You know, I mean, there's a bunch yeah. of things in my life that I worry about, and I I can't even imagine too much public twerking even hitting the top hundred. Now I, I would not. Yeah, so I, I well, I, their argument would be, or at least it seemed to be, that it is a symptom of sexual deviancy. And my point is almost every woman in this class who learned how to twerk, this is something that would have been shown off to somebody important to them, not something they would just show off anywhere. Although they're probably well, they wouldn't show it off at all. It. They would just they would just think it was funny and they were having a good time doing it. Uh, you know, it was just maybe it's just a ridiculous thing that they're doing and and it's not be, now they there are um I I know that there have been pole dancing classes where women could come in and learn from professional pole dancers how to pole dance. You yes. know, and whether this is for exercise or to uh to spice up the marriage if it's sort of a marital aid kind of thing you know none of my business either way right but i guess somebody could consider it's immoral or maybe they would say that it's moral if it happens if the goal for it is to basically strengthen a monogamous uh christian union you know i don't know help help me out here i'm not even sure i know the correct language to use for if this. it's if it's if it's going to strengthen a marriage at any at all, if it's <sighs> Jeff Foxworthy said, said something a, a very long time ago, um, uh, in one of his routines, he said he said something about uh, his aunt and uncle uh, that had been married, uh, been together, been married for like 55 years, and the joke was if you know if um, if they are ever fogging up the windows in a in a car, it's because the doors are broken. They can't get out of the car, you know. And so, you know, over time, uh, the romantic side or the intimate side of a relationship does tend to cool down. And and all marriages have to deal with this in one way or another. And you know, if the woman is willing, uh, let me put it to you this way: if the woman is willing to put the effort out to learn how to do a thing that is literally only going to help with her, you know, with her sex life and her marriage, why is that a bad thing? Would you prefer them to become loveless and divorced? Oh, I certainly wouldn't. I don't. I yeah I, I'm kind of a romantic I don't like it when people's relationships fail so if if that works great even if no, it doesn't work it's it, sorry go yeah, ahead it, even if it doesn't work it, it was good honor to have put out the effort I, I, yeah absolutely yeah. um the ALQ I didn't know what the ALQ was uh so I had to ask sniper what is the ALQ again the ass licking question <clears throat> I think this came and, up in an unpopular opinions uh, a few weeks ago where they were trying to get Britisher to condemn ass licking. I, I can't, I, again, I can't remember if it was a cigar stream or if it was the unpopular opinions. I, I almost have this feeling like it started in a cigar stream and then carried over to the unpopular opinions the next week. Um, ultimately, 
it ultimately it doesn't matter. Uh, the 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 biggest point is they want to act like this is the worst thing in the world. And there was literally one of those one of those you know twenty something newbie uh, trad cons uh, you know talking about how if, if a woman was ever willing to do this for him he'd respect her less. Um, I can sum that up in that is a you problem. Um, when you you know when you're actually in a serious relationship with somebody and uh, you know those kind of things are between you and them and as long as you're not doing it on the middle of main street it's nobody else's concern well yeah it's obviously nobody else's concern and and what people are comfortable with or what what excites them or whatever is be often is it's none of my concern and it's often beyond my comprehension <laughs> i well, you know because i mean obviously there's people who are into all sorts of different kinks and it doesn't make them bad people it doesn't make them immoral it just means that's kind of their kink again not involving children in the privacy of their own home not hurting third parties etc 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 it's the same it's the same general thing why should i care if my neighbor or my neighbor's neighbor occasionally does something that I find a little bit weird in the privacy of their own home, I just can't be bothered. Well, I mean, it takes it, it takes all kinds to make a universe. It takes all kinds to to make a you know to make a planet. Um, and and it, it can be basically summed up by you know why MMV. Your mileage may vary. Just because it's not for you doesn't mean that it's not cool for some other consenting couple to do it and yeah as far as as far as kids go i mean kids are basically the largest no-go zone in the concept of the non-aggression principle you don't screw with children they are given far more protections than any other you know than any adult ever th thought about being and or thought about having and that's you know the, the the libertarian point of view very often comes out it comes down to you're allowed to be stupid but stupid ought to hurt but you, you know you are you do leave the kids out of that you do protect the kids a fair bit more than than you do anybody else right and it's and kids actually are pretty resilient you know as as an adult, I can look back and I can remember things that I saw that I wasn't supposed to see when I was very young or you know, that sort of thing. And it didn't scar me at the time. I mean, I'm not carrying around a bunch of baggage because there were people under a blanket having sex in front of the preschool at the church that I got out of. Uh, I mean, it, it, I, didn't even, I didn't even have the mental framework to process what was happening in front of me. Did that and actually it didn't, happen? Yeah, it actually happened. They were hippies, hippies, dirty hippies. Yeah, they were uh, right out in front of the they were right out in front of the Presbyterian church and they were going out underneath a blanket and all I was thinking is it's kind of a hot day, don't know why they're underneath that blanket and it's, you know, sort were of they, uh, I don't were worry they about that. Well, they well, must I don't, have been literally Well, there was there church. was some kind of bumping and grinding going on. The 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 anything beyond that I wouldn't know because uh my grandparent at the time simply distracted me which was easy to do with a little kid. Hey, why don't we think about anything else but this? <laughs> and then we drove away. Do so you want to go get some ice cream? Yeah. Hey, that you you can you can totally buy me off with ice cream at that at that age. That's fine. It's it's not that's just good parenting. <laughs> but anyway. it, it, sometimes and and that said they shouldn't have been doing what they were doing because it's out in the middle of the public and that's a different discussion. But in your own, you know, in your own house, I, I was getting ready to say in your own bedroom, but if you ain't got no kids, in, in your own house, wherever the mood strikes you is not my problem. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I had a neighbor decide being a bit of a, a naturalist one time and, and was kind of surprised to sort of say, hey, I think my neighbor is topless, doing topless sunbathing. And I just said, okay. I'm not going to look at that, and I just walked away because I was a good kid. But it didn't scar me for life. It it was not a big deal. It was just a thing that I kind of vaguely remember from when I was a little kid. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've got a bit of a sore throat tonight. Uh, I, I, at this point, you're actually at this point you're actually um, describing things though 
where they have kind of broken the rules. If she's not behind a privacy fence, she shouldn't have done it. They uh, they have broken they have broken the rules. I'm just saying that um, yes, we need to protect children. Yes, we need to raise them correctly. But a lot of times children don't even, if by some chance somebody breaks the rules or an accident occurs, it's probably not going to be the end of the world. Okay. Because kids are actually pretty darn resilient, you know, but don't go out of your way to expose them to stuff that you're not supposed to expose them to. But don't have a cow if, you know, kids find a discarded uh, adult magazine or something. Okay. You just kind of confused me there. But, uh, but yeah, I, um, as far as, uh, you know, as far as the, I mean, the amount of work that, uh, that has to go into uh, you even being able to have that done to you, um, I'm sorry, but, uh, if, if you put hot wax there and rip the hair out, I'm going to give you all the secrets to everything I know. <laughs> so more power to you. Um, and and from that we can move on to the barmaid. And that's why they change the uh, security codes every 24 hours. <laughs> um, so uh, anyway, Aspir. Mm. So Aspir, I did actually see, and I think I even uh, responded to Britisher a couple times, just with a, a joke, right? You know, it's like it's not very sanitary. I think I almost t- tweeted something like, you know, don't. Uh, don't mix your uh, brewer's yeast and your E. coli, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just this, those kinds of things. I, I don't care. I don't like flair bartenders to begin with. And some woman holding a glass with her, her ass cheeks and then pouring a beer from a tap into the glass is probably about as bad a case of flair bartending as you can come up with. But it's not immoral. It also, it's it not also, immoral. It, you're, you're at a restaurant. That's obviously a 21 and older location. And if you it, don't want to go there, don't go there. It also strikes me that it's probably a, like a gentleman's club or anything. So, uh, or, or something like that. So, I mean, you know, it, 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 with the same thing with the aerobics class, you know, you had to sign up for the gym and you had to sign up for the class. Well, you know, they don't have any windows in those buildings. And you had to go inside to see it. Um, not you know you don't want to see it. Don't go in the damn building. I mean, it, a lot of this can be summed up with if they're doing something out of your sight. Why do you care? Um, but uh, people, uh, people are gonna have their vices. Um, so. Uh, some vices are going to be worse than others, and and that's fine. Um, I know you drink. I I drink too. Um, I haven't been drinking for a little while just because I haven't, but I do like whiskey. Um, I know, for that matter, AA drinks something uh, uh, with his cigars when he do does his cigar streams. I think it's like port or something he drinks, but it's alcoholic. And sure. and here's where I'm going with that is here in this country in the you know in the uh, late teens and twenties didn't they try and say that was immoral and look how that turned yeah. out. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's we ended up with uh, organized crime and liquor smuggling. I think one of the Kennedy ancestors, the Kennedy uh, political dynasty family ancestors, was involved in that. Joe. Uh, I could be wrong. I may be confusing it. Well, he, I think he was the one that was in very, very good at insurance fraud, not insurance fraud, uh, securities fraud. Mm. And uh, he was so good at it that they, the government basically tapped him to help put together programs to stop people from doing it. Mm. Like the FBI hiring the hackers that cracked the FBI. Yeah. So he can be a, a, a white hat smuggler <laughs> or a white hat security fraud person. But but anyway, Aspir, I, I just don't care. And maybe it's just that you and I are both over 40 and we're the things we have passion for are different than just calling for um, uh, social conservatism, right? Uh, I, this is just not, I can't, I just can't get worked up over something like this. It's, 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 it's like in sports, it's the no harm, no foul rule. I literally don't see how anybody was harmed by this. 
Um, other than the fact that I find it to be vaguely annoying and I personally would not want an ass bear, but it's, but immor immoral, it doesn't, it doesn't even come close to any axis of morality that I would care about. I, I, well, I don't drink beer anyway, uh, so I wouldn't want an ass bear just by default, but, uh, but I got to, I will give her this, it, that, that takes some skill to be able to actually pull off what she did. Um, yeah. You, you, if she could twerk and make the ass beer at the same time, then then <laughs> that would be a thing. <laughs> You're a bad clean, clean up um, on aisle five. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Oof. 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 Yeah. Oh, you're a bad person. Anyway, okay. grotesque um, displays of infanticide and cannibalism. Uh, yeah, I don't. I really don't know the context of this. Uh, I, I, from what I understand, from what I saw on Discord, this that that one more or less stayed on Twitter, unless it was brought up in this cigar stream that just happened, which I have not listened to. Um, but Britishers seem to be under the impression that it was a gag for a Halloween party. Okay, it's a Halloween party. Why, why, why do we care? They're not, they're not actually advocating doing it in real life. Why do you care? Well, this might be slightly more interesting. So revulsion is actually a trait that uh, evolutionary psychologists talk about. There are reasons yes. why certain types of people feel revulsion. And I think furthermore, there's a correlation between uh, conservatism and liberalism uh, politically and the degree to which people have that kind of reflex. And it's only just popped into mm. my head uh, just now, just suddenly remembering it. But it is one of those fascinating cases where you're looking at how something as simple as the degree to which somebody has revulsion about something like this. Uh, you know, these types of d displays that they're describing or something scatological or anything along those lines, that there is actually a political correlation to it. Um, if this was a Halloween, if this was a Halloween party, if the British was right and this thing was a Halloween party gag thing, okay, whoever came up with that idea is a jackass. And that is not a Halloween party I want to go to because he's a jackass. But you know what? I didn't have to go, did I? Yeah, it is a bit of a turd in the punch bowl. It At is, the very it, least, it, it's a party foul, but I don't think it's immoral. You know, so it's it, it, well, I, it, morality. Uh, you know, morality is so poorly defined uh, by a lot of the social conservatives. You know, um, as it is anyway. Um, you know, the whole, I, I'll know it when I see it standard. I'm sorry, but that's not a standard. And, and honestly, that statement from, from that Supreme court case, the, the obscenity case, um, I, I think that, I think that one sentence there that I know it when I see it thing really drives it Britisher hard. At least it seems to, cause it's, from what I know of Mary White House, since I'm an American, and I don't really know her that much, but from what I know it, uh, of Mary White House, she's very much a I know it when I see it person, right? And so I think that just drives into his skull, and he can't deal with it. And and I'm with him on that. <clears throat> um, oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, there's the the uh, from from another Supreme Court case. There's the notion of something being without redeeming social importance. And I, I only remember this because of a Tom Lehrer song, but that's another story. Um, the idea that art or any type of expression has to have redeeming social importance to, be, to not be basically uh, something that should be legislated out of existence, right? That, that it has to have that. So for instance, you could look at a movie which contains acts of violence or sexuality, but if it was an artistic piece, that it would be okay. But if it wasn't making some sort of artistic statement, if it was just some sort of pur purient uh, display of sexuality meant to do nothing more than titillate, there are people who still think that that's wrong. 
but in the American system, we don't really differentiate it. Speech is, I mean, at the current day, we just say speech is speech. And there's very few exceptions, right. except getting back to the protected classes that we don't allow to be parts of these things. For the most part, speech is just speech. Now in the UK, they have a whole list of things that I, I'm still not entirely sure why the conservatives were doing this with their fox hunting and their ivory trade and their no face sitting and just all these weird rules they came up with about pornography and things that nobody, it's like nobody asked you to do any of this. They just decided they had a majority. So they just went off with this random laundry list of, of ideas with no real apparent rhyme or reason to why these things all somehow fit together with fox hunting, but they did it anyway. Um, I don't know. I, I, I'm I happy to be an American. I just don't care. As long as nobody's forcing me to look at it, I just don't see what the problem is. Um, yeah, and 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 <clears throat> that's to say, you know, if it's if it's suggestive or questionable, I, w I will say this. I, I've I've often found it funny. Um, and the Europeans are a little bit different on this subject than we are, but. It, you can have massive amounts of violence in any given movie and nobody blinks that much of an eye, but Oh my God, if you pop a tit out and I'm, I'm sorry if you, it, it's never made logical sense to me. Now I don't buy the argument that either one of them really affect you anyway, because most of the studies seem to debunk that, or at least most of the ones I've seen, but I, I would think that if you were going to make that argument, I would have thought you would have gone after the violence first. And I've never actually understood that. And I guess it comes from the Puritans. Um, but as far as like, uh, you know, the, the British government and, and the, and how they are being authoritarian these days. Um, and there's no other way to say it. They are being authoritarian. Um, and as far as the these you know the, these kids that that um, certain people have been talking to um, recently, it just strikes me that they they want to do God's job for God, and that's that's not that's not what they're supposed to do. God has His job. God does His job. You know, uh, it, you don't you don't go there. Um, the 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 it's John eight seven is the one that talks about uh, let him without sin uh, cast the first stone talking about the the adulterous woman. Um, it, it it's literally you know God telling you that no you don't you don't need to be doing my job because you're not good in a good enough place to do it. And and it, it's it, I'm seeing it all over YouTube. You know, the, like I said, the conservatives. Although, uh, although it, you know, on most fronts, the conservatives are not actually conservative in the UK. It, <clears throat> if they if it gives them more power on a particular subject, they seem to be willing to jump on it. Um, but it, it's just you know, it, it pointing out that they're wrong, you know, and, and pointing out that they're getting that they're even getting their own side wrong, which a lot of times is what I see. A lot of the centrists do that they're even trying to point out that you're not getting your own stuff right um uh, when it comes to the the being christian thing you're doing you're you're literally going against what the book is telling you um it doesn't then mean that you want total chaos and and havoc no it means that y you actually understand that it's between, you know, most of this stuff, as long as it's kept private and consensual and, you know, and, and nobody is ab abused and nobody is taken advantage of. In other words, there's no victim, right? There's no victim. What happens later is between you and God, and it's not anybody else's business, if you believe in God. Uh, you know, it's between you and God, and it's nobody else's business. Um. Did you ever by any chance see the movie A Clockwork Orange? Oh, I've never actually managed to sit all the way through it. It's a difficult movie. I yeah, yeah it is. And I, I get the point that they're going at because they're basically they're trying to reprogram the guy, right? 
Um, right. It, it's very much if, about if the struggle right, between. I'm sorry. He's a rap- if I'm remembering the point of it right, is it like he's like a rapist or something like that, and they're trying to burn out all his sexual circuits so that he'll just never even try again. Oh, it's much worse than that. Let, let me let me okay. break this down for you quickly. Okay. So basically, we have our protagonist, who is a, a young man who has this group of friends that he hangs around with. They do horrible things. There's rape in the movie. There's violence in the movie. There's just all of the things that, that you know, we don't want people doing, especially, you know, the, the young people. He's a bad, bad, bad person. But the state takes him and program, basically programs him to find all of the things that used to give him joy in life, including, coincidentally, his love of the music of Beethoven. So they make it so that he hates Beethoven. He has a physical uh, response to anything involving sex or violence. And then as they release him out into the world, he proceeds to become the victim of everything else in society. His friends who used to be in his posse become police officers and beat him senseless. Uh, a couple of his victims find him and you know essentially torture him. All of these things sort of happen. And at the end of the movie, he basically becomes the victim you know he becomes he is the victim of the movie in spite of the fact that he's a horrible human being and it's it basically ends on on that note leaving the viewer to sort of try to figure out what the hell did i just see and you have to think about it in terms of different types of moral things being in opposition to each other and what is the ultimate moral wrong in this movie and in this case it was the society suppressing the individual to this this state now the reason i bring this up is this is a movie that's full of all the things that we were just talking about violence sexuality a lot of things and i'm sure that there are a lot of people who would probably want to ban this movie but in the course of the last minute and a half i just described a fairly complicated set of moral dilemmas presented in an artistic vehicle And the fact that we can have a discussion about this movie and the fact that it's disturbing enough that it actually made you not want to finish it, it's a powerful piece by Stanley Kubrick. And I'm actually glad that that piece exists in spite of the fact that superficially it has these other elements that somebody might think need to be banned. So this kind of is an example of where my morality comes from in terms of social permissiveness in the arts. So... It just because somebody thinks something's grotesque doesn't mean that it's automatically immoral in a nutshell. Yeah, that's uh, that's actually quite interesting. Actually, um, <clears throat> it strikes me. Um, I, I said something before about uh, trying to not create any more havoc than you than you possibly uh, than you possibly have to, and um, and and people that are too ideological one way or the other. I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not picking favorites here. Either one of them um, will create more havoc than, than they need to just in general when they, you know, when they get too strong and get too much in ascendancy, it strikes me. That's the whole point of the movie, the way you describe it. Right. The point is to make you think the points to make you feel something. The points to make you think about something and that's why it's art rather than pornography. I mean, well, yeah, but I mean, point being, they they caused just as much in the end. They caused just as much suffering and havoc as he ever did. Right. What the state did to him was actually morally more wrong than what he did to his victims leading up to it. Yeah. But, of course, uh, you could, somebody else could watch this movie and come at it with a completely different perspective. It's not an easy thing to watch, and this isn't just the this isn't the only movie that exists like that. Um, you know, there's a lot of movies that um, that push the boundaries, and there's a lot of types of art that push the boundaries. And I am not an art critic, and I'm not a student of film. And again, if the Britisher was here, I'm sure he would have a whole lot to say about this topic. But when I hear people talking about the Joker, And Joaquin Phoenix's performance, I mean, I haven't seen the movie, and I just know that he's supposedly amazing in this thing. Um, And people are wondering if a movie like this should actually exist. It's like, well, no, you have an opportunity 
now to have a conversation about what would drive this person to become a villain. Even if it was just a set of accidental things, this is unsettling to people because they don't want to think that if they were born in Nazi Germany, that they would have been one of the bad people. People don't want to think about how thin the veneer of civilization actually is for most of us. And there is way too much, there's way too much psychological data that proves that, yes, you would be one of the bad people, or at least the vast majority of you would be. So what used to be private, you know, what used to just happen in people's bedrooms or at parties or uh, amongst close groups of friends now is exposed for everybody to see. So you can go online and if you're in the mood to just sort of start pointing your finger and saying things are immoral, you've got lots of stuff to choose from, right? I wouldn't there even know that. about Aspir if it wasn't for Paul Joseph Watson. Yeah, I, um, information overload is a real thing and, and the internet has created information overload. Um, I, I really feel like a lot of these people, you know, the whole ashes of a civilization thing, there's a bunch of bad stuff out there. There's a bunch of dishonest operators, what have you. I, you know, I, when it comes to the, the social justice people on the left, probably 85% of them are honest people ranging from just ideologically driven to not even knowing what they're talking about and following their heart and not thinking. But there is a 15% they're dishonest operators, right? And and that that is a thing that exists. Um, but don't let the internet convince you that it is real life. It's not. You know, it, 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 there's a reason that it's one or two things happen here and then one or two things happen over there and then one or two things. And, and if you didn't have the internet, you'd only know about the one or two things where you were. One or two things is inside the margin of error of human stupidity. Does, does that make any sense? It it does. Okay. The the idea that the world okay so social conservatives want to move toward this vision of of some kind of vision of the world, some sort of utopian vision. And I don't mean to say utopian. I mean there's a vision, an ideal vision. Maybe I won't use the, the U word. It's an ideal vision of what they think society should be. And a lot of that isn't just moving towards something, it's moving away from the things that they think are trying to attack that vision that they want. So the deconstructionism, progressivism, all of these other isms that they're they're worried yeah. about. Now, to what right. extent, oh, hold on, let me finish this thought. <laughs> to what extent um, is their view of the things they're trying to avoid being influenced by the fact that they suddenly have all this information that's available to them. Because I grew up, I was raised by older people and I grew up around a bunch of them and a lot of them were really interesting. And I was like a little sponge. I would just listen to things they would say. And the picture that they draw of the world that they came from is nothing like what I think these people think the past used to be like. The 1950s mm. were not the same way as as this idealized picture that I think these people have in their heads. So the the idea of what the world is and the growing immorality in the world could, to a very large extent, just be that suddenly they're aware of all these things where they would not be otherwise. Yes, that that, that was kind of the point I, uh, I was making to an extent. Um, <clears throat> the um, the 50s, uh, the 50s were not, well, okay, depending on where you were, the 50s were not at all what um, what you thought they were. Yeah, uh, you know, marriages broke down less often. And that, that is objectively true. It's not as if burlesque shows didn't exist. It was not as bad. if there weren't clubs where you could go drink during Prohibition. Um, Any time you try to stamp out things by simply wagging your bony finger at them and saying they're immoral, you don't really change people's you, minds for the most part. All you do yeah, is drive it underground. An under, yeah, an underground thing, and, and that's more liable to create exploitation. Right, and the more repressed a society is, sometimes the more the counter-reaction, that's uh, psychological reactance is the term the stronger the reactants can become. So 
you look at Japan, it's uh, homogeneous, very traditional, um, <clears throat> but they have these giant sex hotels with, you know, it's shaped like a giant boat and it's full of every kink and perversion you could possibly imagine. Um, mm. you, you would think that the Japanese would be the last people to have this. And then you think about psychological reactants and you realize, no, that makes perfect sense. And there's other cultures that are historically very repressed. And I, I wouldn't even know where to begin cataloging all the different ways in which people respond to these things. So not only can you not get people to stop, you might even just make things worse. Yeah. Um, again, I think tolerance is generally a pretty good thing within the parameters that we've already talked about. Yeah. And well, even uh, even here, or, well, okay, I don't live in the South anymore, but even in the even in the old South, you know, as they began to ban gambling. Okay. Um, have you ever been to Mississippi? No, sir. Okay. They it is still actually illegal to gamble in in Mississippi. I say this as there are hundreds of casinos on the Mississippi River. Do you know what they've done here? I think they found a nice convenient loophole. They put them on they, the casinos are on boats. Now these boats are anchored in place and never and never can move, but they float, right? And, and you have to board them by a floating dock, right? As long as they're not on land, they are not breaking the law. And, and this is, and, and they've kind of, at this point, you know, they, they're, you know, it's driven commerce in the area to the point that it's all been signed off on. It's now legit. It's fine. It's whatever. But it came from a, a history of when, you know, when a lot of, you know, Tennessee, Mississippi, and, and a lot of the South began ban banning gambling. Um, and butting in, you know, the government was butting in there. They just created riverboat casinos, you know, and and they ran up and down the big rivers. And the whole point was, you know, how are you going to catch me? You don't know where I'm going to be tomorrow, right? Mm -hmm. During Prohibition, um, up in the Midwest, you know, everybody knows about Capone and, and what have you. But up in up in the Midwest... It wasn't just stuff being smuggled in. It was also stuff being made in, you know, in basically in caves with no quality control. And there was a massive increase in uh, adult blindness because these, the, uh, this booze that was getting made and taken to these underground bars was literally poisonous. You know, there, it, it, there's supposedly... Uh, in Illinois, there was a there was a custom that whenever you first bought from a uh, from a, a distributor when you were a, a bar uh, um, and you first bought from a distributor, you made him drink one in front of you. Where do you think that comes from? During prohibition, a lot of them were peddling poison, and they weren't going to buy it. And after a certain period of time, they cottoned onto this, and they wouldn't buy it unless you were willing to drink some of it. Because if you wouldn't drink it, they don't want it. So I don't think we're going to solve the rest of the world's problems tonight. We no. should probably we should probably wrap this up. And I, yeah, I just want to say me down a rabbit hole, so. I, I just want to say that um, I, I hope people understand the way the, the the tone here. We are actually we're talking about a lot of people who aren't here. Uh, we're talking about them in, in, in a lot of them are worthy of respect for a lot of reasons, right? We're not trying yeah. to attack anybody as a person. We're just saying we don't understand uh, why some of these things bother you. <clears throat> and because because based on both your and my experience and the different ways that we've kind of arrived at the same spirit of tolerance, we just don't see what the issue is. And if anything, I worry that it's gonna cause more problems as we were talking about reactants later on. Um, I mean, we all sort of want the same things. We want people to have happy, fulfilled lives, but I don't see how uh, censorship and shaming and a lot of this stuff is really going to make the situation better. Um, I think being tolerant of other people, you know, is actually a much better approach, but this yeah. is just the way I live my life. And this is, and I try not to be a hypocrite about it. Um, 
Well, like, and we're not trying to attack anybody something. who's not here. You know, we're not, you know, it, 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 it's, it's fine. I, I'm just sort of at a loss for words. I actually went on to another uh, Discord uh, before we started recording, and I was asking uh, them to try to explain what it was that they sort of believed in. I was looking for some social conservatives to, to so that I wouldn't be straw manning them. And uh, I got a whole bunch of different answers. So I, I almost feel like I'm more confused at the end of this conversation than I was at the beginning. Fair. Um, I, and, and, and like I said, you will, uh, you will at some point be hypocritical. You're human. You're guaranteed. I woke up. I, I do. <laughs> I, I do believe uh, I do believe I've been making that point the whole way through this. You know, uh, we are uh, we are flawed. We are you know therefore going to be uh, we're going to mess it up. Um, I, I'm I'm not sure that any of these people that have been driving further into uh, wanting censorship on the right um, are necessarily dishonest honor operators. Um, and, and there are, and that's, that is to say, there are dishonest operators out there, but it's like, it's like this. Don't, don't start assuming that everybody is a dishonest operator. Um, it's really hard to know what's truly in somebody's head. I don't believe the Britisher is a dishonest operator. I don't think I am a dishonest operator. I, I am a jerk. I am. A, a, a loud mouth. I am. Um, I have to censor myself heavily to be able to be on anything YouTube because I've got such a foul mouth. I am a mess myself, and I do not deny this. The one thing I will always do is tell you the truth, even when it's ugly. I. I it's just that's the way I live. Um, don't assume bad intent. Try and try and look at people in a more Charitable, I think, is probably the right word, but try and look at people in a more charitable view more of the time. And if you don't think you can do that, then find somebody that you can touch base with that, that you know, that you have a little bit of trust in and see if they can do it. Because this straw manning nonsense, whether it be on the left or the right, is is not productive and it's going to end in well it's already started to have violence but it's going to end in just more and more violence from my point of view and that's not a world i want my kids growing up in so can we please tone it down knock it off and start seeing the honest humanity in the people around us yes well i i'm certainly going to try empathy is a good thing as well it's a lot easier to uh if you actually try to understand what makes people do the things that they do, it's a lot easier to remember that they're still human and that they're yeah. not necessarily immoral. They might just be, they might just have a different point of view than you do about certain things. Mm -hmm. And well, they I... may have, you know, they just, it just may be that they, that, that, and the best thing you honestly can do is live your life well. And, you know, if there's information that you have, if you want to make a suggestion to somebody, that's fine. But there's no reason to try to sh to use to weaponize shame. That's what the far left does. You know, they they wep they've they've learned how to weaponize shame, which is something that the far right uh, during the moral majority days never succeeded in doing. And I think that's why they're so much more successful. That's why they've oh, they become more entrenched, because weaponizing shame is a really powerful weapon. And I just I feel like the only way to disarm the far left is to just reject that idea. Well, they did, they did weaponize shame to a certain extent, but it, but it bit them r rather heartedly in the butt in the end, right? And, and my point would be learn that lesson and, and don't make that same mistake. You know, don't make the same mistake again that's already been made. Um, uh, when it comes down to it, we're all immoral. Every single last one of us on this planet is immoral about something and as long as we're generally an honest operator just remember that we're all human and we're all screwed up well that seems like a good place to end it on <laughs> on you on you saying something profound and wise so why don't we just say good night to everybody all right good night and thank you for listening if you hung around good night <laughs>